welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at seven PC Linux distros, so let's jump straight in to the wonderful world of open source. So, here we are with our first distro which is Linux Mint. Now, I do personally like Linux Mint, one well, of the main reasons being it talks very nicely to my HDMI recorders. So if you've seen me running a version of Linux on this channel in the past 18 months, that's the principal reason I've been using Linux Mint. But having said that, it's also a very nice distro. It's very easy to customize. I like that as well. And if you're coming from Windows or from Mac, it's a great version of Linux to start with. Now, here I've installed some software myself. I've installed GIMP, I've installed Caden Live. But when you first install Linux Mint, you get lots of software pre-installed. It's very well set up to use straight out of the box, as it were. You'll see there's lots of accessories here. There's various graphical applications. There's lots of internet stuff. You've got the Thunderbird email package. You've got the Firefox web browser pre-installed. You've got LibreOffice pre-installed with all the different components. And you've also got very good sound and video support compared to at least some other Linux distributions, again, straight out of the box, straight after the install. So the chances are, if you've got video or audio files, they'll play straight away from Linux Mint. Now, I don't mind installing applications from the terminal, but if you don't want to do that, do not worry, because you've got a great installer with the Linux Mint. If I just run that up, it'll probably ask for my password. I knew it would. What is my password on this machine? I have too many passwords these days. I think it's that one. Yes. That was my password. Thank goodness for that. So I could, for example, install a package from here. I could search, say, for video. Just type in video if I can type. And there we are. And we've got lots of video packages there, Caden Live, OpenShot, etc. We've also got Cheese Lock to take pictures and videos from your webcam. So if I just click on that, it would come up. And if I want to install that, all I've got to do would be click on Install. So it's very easy to install packages in Linux Mint. But for now, I'm not going to be doing that. It's also worth pointing out there are different flavors of uh, Linux Mint. If we go to its main page over here on its website, you will see if we just go down a little bit, there's the Cinnamon Edition is probably the most popular. I'm running the Cinnamon Edition here. There's also the Mate Edition, which is just slightly different. And there are again lots of themes inside these, so you can really get it to work exactly how you want it. And it's also nice to note that the philosophy is very clear. If we just sort of have a look what it says about itself, the purpose of Linux Mint is to produce a modern, elegant and comfortable operating system which is both powerful and easy to use. And I would very much go along with that. That describes very well Linux Mint. You can probably tell I like this distro. That said, it's now time to move on and to install something else. So, here we are in our second distro, which is Ubuntu. Nice and purpley here. This is another very popular distribution, another good choice if you're coming from Windows to Linux, although it's slightly more different to Windows than, uh, for example, Linux Mint as we saw just previously. So you haven't, for example, got a start menu here, but you have got a launcher down the left side of the screen, which as you can see has got access to, to various programs, things like parts of LibreOffice and uh, the Firefox web browser, your, your files, etc. And again, as with Linux Mint, you've got lots of pre-installed software in the basic image of Ubuntu. So once you've installed it, lots of stuff is available to you. So let's, for example, just launch a LibreOffice writer there, the word processor. I just want to show you one issue here, which is that where's the menu for this program? Um, it isn't appearing on the top of its window. And by default, the menu for programs in, in Ubuntu appears on the menu bar at the top of the screen, not in the program's own window. I find that slightly disconcerting. If you want to fix that, you can go into the settings there. You can go into appearance. You can change a few appearance settings in Ubuntu, not as many as in the Linux Mint. But you can go to behavior here, and we can have, say, the Windows title bar appearing in its own window and uh, also being always displayed. You might find that easier to use if you're coming from Windows. We can close it down nice and easily over there. As I said, there's lots of software pre-installed here. There is a graphical installer available over there to install software. But if you want to find all the other software installed, which isn't on the launcher, go to the search button up here, and you'll see various applications you might have recently used come up already. But if you go to the Applications button down there, you can see everything on the machine. And if we click here to see all the installed applications, 
This is everything installed in the default image of Ubuntu these days, which is really good. Lots and lots of useful utilities and software down here. I think, this, for example, Solitaire is here. It's always good to see Solitaire. We could drag that down to a launcher if we wanted, leave it over there so it's available when we want Solitaire. Just to let you know, I've installed here, um, which version is it? It's a 16.04.3 of Ubuntu. This is an LTS version. I very much like that. LTS means long-term support. It means you've got five years of security and maintenance updates guaranteed if you install this software. I really like that. I could have installed a more slightly more recent version, Ubuntu 17.04, when I make this video. That doesn't have as much support. So anyway, that's Ubuntu, a good, solid, stable Linux distribution. But now let's move on to look at something slightly different. Right, here we are with our third distro, which is slightly unusual. This is Debbie and Jesse with a Raspberry Pi desktop. So effectively what I'm doing here is running the Raspberry Pi operating system, Raspbian with a Pixel desktop, but on a standard XXX PC. I'm not on a Raspberry Pi here. I'm not on a single board computer. Yes, I can see a Raspberry up here. Yes, I can see the standard things we would see on a Raspberry Pi, and it's got LibreOffice installed. It's got the Chromium web browser. I can even go down and run the Raspberry Pi configuration thing there, except it isn't Raspberry Pi configuration. I'm running here on a standard x86 based desktop PC because the Raspberry Pi Foundation have now made this available for a PC. If we look to the web browser there, we can see if we go to their page for this Raspberry Pi desktop, this is basically the Pi operating system running on a PC. Why would you want to do that? Well, I guess one of the reasons to do this is if you use a Raspberry Pi a lot, it's useful to be able to run it also on other computers to run the same operating system. And it is a nice stable operating system. It runs very nicely. It's got a nice look and feel to it. And the Raspberry Pi Foundation's intention is to increase access to computing. And I guess they're doing that now, not just by launching the Raspberry Pi, but offering this rather different and rather interesting Linux distro. So, as our middle distro, I'm trying out Manjaro, which I'm running from a USB drive, but it seems to be running very nicely from a USB drive. The main reason I'm actually running this is because uh, some of you have said to me, you should try Manjaro, and I try to listen to you now and then, and uh, therefore I'm having a look. And I must admit, I do like the interface here. If we go down here, this is uh, very nicely done. Look, you've got um, a menu, and then you can see things inside the menu. Again, we've got the Firefox web browser, Office, we've got LibreOffice and everything else. Very nicely uh, set up, quite a good solid uh, distro this, a lot of stuff again in, in the basic in, install. But I do like the way this is put together. This is a nice interface and uh, I can see why therefore a lot of people have said to me, try that Chris, I think you'll really, really like it. And uh, if we go to the, the web again, just to look at its uh, website, as you can see, this is the version I've just installed. This is the version with the uh, XFCE interface, which is a nice lightweight interface, which works really well. But there are other versions as well. This seems to be a, a big project. You can get it with all the different uh, Linux interfaces you want. I don't particularly like the GNOME interface, but I know some people do happen to like that. But uh, overall, this seems to be a, a great project, a fantastic version of Linux, which um, you know I'd be very happy to, to use. So uh, I'm glad people pointed it out to me. But now let's move on to look at something else. Right, our next distro is Slacko64 Puppy, which is one of the puppy distributions of Linux. And these are basically cut down versions of Linux, optimized versions of Linux, which don't take a lot of install space. There's less than 200 megabytes for the whole image here. And so they run very well on lower end hardware and they run very well from a USB drive. And if we just look down here, you'll see on the, the menu, there's a lot of things included. It's been a very efficiently done. You haven't got some of the really powerful applications installed by default in some of the other systems like a LibreOffice, but there's loads of things here. It's a perfectly workable system. And so it's all uh, sitting there for you. I'll just show you the menus in case you want to pause and have a look. Even under fun, we've got, look, we've got a Invaders thing, a game. I haven't figured out how to make that work, but I'm sure it's very exciting. So we, uh, shall we kill this? We, we will indeed. And uh, over here, we have got a launcher. We could launch things like the uh, Abbey Word Word Processor, which I've of course got on my desktop, haven't I? I could type the words hello and make it nice and big. Best test of any operating system. Can you launch a uh, word processor and write the word hello and make it big? You can, it works. That's really good. Get rid of that, close without saving. And if I just nip to the Firefox web browser, this is a cut down 
Linux operating system, but it's still got Firefox included, which is really good to see. And if I go to the uh, Puppy Linux homepage, there's both a puppylinux.com and puppylinux.org website. I don't quite know why. Maybe someone will tell me in the comments here. But as you can see, it reminds us it's a really nice, uh, efficient size version of Linux. And if you want to have a go, want to download the thing, you can go down to the download page. You can see specifically here I'm running a Slido 64 Puppy 6.3.2. But anyway, if you want a small, compact, easy to download and run version of Linux, particularly from a USB drive, why not look at Slacko64 Puppy or one of its other puppy friends? Right, having run a very lightweight distro with one of the puppy versions of Linux, I thought we'd run a fairly lightweight distro called Lubuntu, which as you can probably guess is a lightweight version of Ubuntu, as we looked at earlier. And this is a great distro to install on the computer if you want to bring an old sort of piece of hardware back to life. You can take it to run it on a pretty low-end system, something that maybe doesn't run Windows very well anymore. You can install this, make a nice zippy and a very useful computer. And this is also a good distribution to run on a USB drive to carry in your pocket and plug into a computer and take your operating system with you. You can do that with virtually any version of uh, Linux if you want to. You can certainly do it with the puppy version we just looked at. But I think you, Lubuntu is a nice choice because it's small, but it's a little bit bigger than the puppy versions. This is about, I think, a, a gigabyte for the, for the install compared to about sort of 200 megabytes for the puppy version. So it'll fit easily on, say, a two gigabyte key. And indeed, here I'm running this off a two gigabyte USB drive. It's running very well indeed. And as you'll also see, it's got, I think, a nicer interface, really, than the standard Ubuntu. You've got a standard sort of menu here with all the software accessible. There isn't too much installed here because it is a lightweight distro, but you've got some, some basic software. We have got the Firefox web browser. And let's be honest, these days, if you've got a decent web browser, you can do an awful lot. We don't have LibreOffice installed. You could install LibreOffice, but we have the Abbey Word web processor we saw a few minutes ago, and we have the Geneomeric spreadsheet, which uh, Look at the speed that came up, given the fact it's running from a USB 2 drive. That's most impressive. And of course, here we also have some system tools and preferences and things like that. If we go to the website where you download it, we can click on, obviously, on Download. And you'll see clearly it's part of the Ubuntu stable. And if I just go down to where I downloaded it, you'll see there we are, the download are nice and straightforward. This is a version, what, 17.04 of a Lubuntu. So this is yet another option for us in terms of thinking about which Linux distribution we really want to use. But uh, having looked at two lightweight distributions, I thought I'd end up with something a bit beefier and also rather interesting. Right, our final distro is this, which is a Zorin OS, more specifically Zorin OS Core I'm running here, which is very much intended to be a version of Linux you can run if you're really used to Windows or Mac and you want to transition across and you want things to look as, as close as possible. And I think as soon as I open up the, uh, the menu here, you'll see that this is rather Windows 10-esque, isn't it? You know, we go into accessories and they appear there. We can go back again. We look under, say, Internet. We've got um, Chromium web browser here. We look under Office. It's, uh, as you would probably expect, LibreOffice is in there. So this is a very Windows-like um, Linux implementation. And it's even got Wine there by default, which that's the, uh, the program that can allow you to run at least some Windows applications under Linux. I must try that in a bit more depth in a, in a future video. If I go to the uh, settings, you will see that you can actually change the, the look of it. If I open that thing up there, probably didn't need to double click. So anyway, that's what we're in at the moment. That's the default. You can go to a more um, standard Windows looking like uh, thing. You'll now see uh, open windows are coming up as the uh, little uh, bars at the bottom as we used to perhaps in earlier versions of Windows, rather than going across to that version where they come up as uh, little uh, icons like that. There is a version over here which is a more linux type desktop. I won't click on that here because it takes ages to go back and forth. You would end up looking a bit like this. Magic of filmmaking showing us what would happen there. But I'll come back to where we are and um, this is where we are right now. So uh, this is Zorin OS. Let's just go into the, uh, the browser here and just to show you this is its uh, web page. And you can see the different versions here. There's the version called Ultimate, which you actually pay for, which is either 19 dollars, 19 euros, 19 pounds, 19 something or other, depending where you are in the world. This also includes um, a look, so you can make it look like um, Mac OS, which you don't get in, in the standard version in the uh, 
I say free version, it's not necessarily a free version. We go down to the core version I'm running here. It's got a lot with it, LibreOffice we've just seen, a lot, everything you really want built in, like so many of the distros here. You can choose what you pay. You can put a custom amount of zero in, in which case you can download from there without having to pay anything. Uh, you might want to pay something. The only thing I've got against the paying thing here, if you choose to uh, do it and pay, uh, you have to put a credit card number and you can't use PayPal, which is, uh, to my mind, a little bit scary. Uh, but there's also a, a light version, and there's also a business version, and an education version. So lots of versions of a Zorin OS. And I feel I might come back to this in a future video. I think there's quite a lot of opportunities going on here. I must check that out in a bit more depth in the future. Well, that was a long and interesting day. I don't think I've ever downloaded and installed as many operating systems in such a short period of time. But uh, what have I learned? Well, two things really. The first is that since I use some of the distros I've included here, particularly things like Ubuntu, their installation and their configuration has improved significantly. All of the distros I use today have been downloaded and installed and just worked straight out of the box, straight out of the install, very well indeed. And that's a very good sign for Linux, and it is getting easier and easier to get into Linux and make it work properly on your computer. The other thing I've learned is I do still like Linux Mint. I will continue to use Linux Mint on my netbook and probably as my go-to Linux install on this channel. But what about you? What is your favorite Linux distro? Please let us all know down in the uh, comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.